So now that we've replaced the thermostat or regulator, we're gonna be doing a radiator flush. So I was at the auto parts store and I picked up this. No idea if it's good or bad. The people at the store had no recommendations, unfortunately. So I grabbed it anyways and I'm gonna give it a try. Let's see what it says to do. Drain the system, fill with water, run the engine, let the radiator cool, drain the system, install this stuff, fill it with water while the system is running, blah, 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 let's get started. I already drained the system and filled it with water last night after completing the thermostat slash regulator replacement. Looks like it went pretty well. I don't see any leaks here in the thermostat housing, so that's fantastic. I also ran the engine up to temperature where the thermostat is supposed to open, and I could tell that it did based on the temperature drops while watching the coolant temps. So that's a really good sign. So I just ran the engine for 10 minutes with the heater on and just water in the system to help loosen everything up. Once it cools down, I'm going to drain it and then install the radiator flush stuff. So I let the engine cool for about 30 minutes. I pulled off the radiator cap and now I need to drain the coolant again. So I'm gonna get underneath this and drain this puppy again. As you can see here, the water that I'm draining is still very pink from the residual coolant that was left in the system when I filled it with water. Okay, so this next part is gonna require me to run the engine while I'm filling the radiator. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this cover back on just to protect myself while running the engine. There we go, cover is installed. And now that I'm fully done draining the radiator, I'm gonna turn that valve to off, if I can find it. There we go. Now we're going to add the radiator flush. My wife is going to help me and she's gonna hold the bottom of the funnel in place while I pour in the radiator flush. Ready? Okay. Uh, yes. Can you take it out? Yep. Okay. It's hard on the arms. So the next part of this is I have to put water in here while the engine's running. Okay, so part of the radiator flush, it said that they wanted three to six hours of normal wear. Um, so I don't really have anywhere to take this. I'm just going up and down the street for funsies uh, and putting about an hour on each night and uh, just trying to really get the radiator fluid and the flush stuff to get through and do his job. So I'm going to go back and forth and uh, really piss off the neighbors. So here we go. Okay, so we've started the radiator flush procedure and what I've done, just to recap, is I've drained out the old stuff, um, I flushed it once with just water, and then I put in the radiator flush uh, per the directions, and it said for a deep flush you'd run it three to six hours over a period of a few days. So I've done that about every hour, I've come home and run it for 45 minutes to an hour, just driving back and forth on the street. And uh, so now it's time to get the flush out of the system and put the real stuff back in. So what that requires is draining everything out of it and then flushing it one more time with water and then putting in the real stuff. What might require two flushes depends on how much you notice coming out the second time. But I've already run the engine a day and I've let it uh, run it for about 15 or 20 minutes and then I've let it cool down for about 40 minutes. So it seems to make the fluid flow a little better and kind of stirs everything up. So. Here we go, we're gonna drain this guy again. I should say gal, I forgot. But... This is my lady. Okay, so uh, this has a little quarter turn valve back here and I kinda just do it by feel. It was hard to get out the first time, but now that I've used it, it's kind of, it's not too bad. I just have to find it, there it is. So now I'm gonna go ahead and turn this a quarter turn. If I can get, there we go. Oh, 
and this system is going to start a lot of vacuum. So I need to crack the radiator. Okay, and then since I still don't have the right bucket for or the right pan for this, I have to keep doing it in small sections. Okay, so that's kind of the last little drips. I'm gonna go ahead and shut it off. And now I'm gonna fill it with water one more time, just to make sure we get the rest of that, uh, the rest of that out of there. The, right, the rest of the flush stuff out of there. Here we go. Just gonna try to slowly fill it. Okay, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start the unit up and kind of fill it up a couple more times so it stops taking water. Okay, we've flush the system and then we reflush the system and now what we're going to do is I'm going to disconnect the overflow valve on the radiator which connects to the reservoir and I want to get all this fluid out too because this is a mix of you know, as the radiator got hot and cold it you know it kind of pushed the fluid back and forth so I want to get all this out too so I'm going to disconnect that hose and try not to spill it all over the place as I get it into the bucket drain it so let's do that now okay I'm attempting to get this those clamp off. So, what I'm gonna have to do here is cut a little bit of that. So, okay, so I cut this. I'm gonna try to pull it off now that I've, I've put a little slit in the top. It has a really cramped space. Thing, this big metal thing isn't like really hot right now. There we go. So I got it off of there. I'm trying to get it untangled from the from everything. There we go. Not too bad. Flush this a little bit. Sure, good idea. Yeah. Now it's clear. Oh, there some? Clear first. No? It was really yellow. Oh. Good call. So now that I've I've slit this a little bit here, um, I'm gonna cut this back just a little bit, just to where the slit is. Because you can see that it is a little bit damaged where the clamp used to be. Yeah, and that's good practice too, is to not sometimes that stuff gets stretched out and it only seems to work in that spot when it's clamped and when you try to unclamp and reclamp it you kind of stretched it out so it's, it's good practice to get rid of that anyways there we go that's a nice fresh cut okay. that is on there Okay, the next thing we need to do is not forget to close the drain because we let it drip for a little while. Okay. That appears to be good. Haha. Uh -huh. Cat extended life coolant. What that flap is for? Yeah. So we filled this up, we needed to make sure that we filled it uh, not too quickly. So the manual specified a maximum flow rate of how fast you could fill it to help with uh, entrapment of air uh, or help prevent entrapment of air. So the manual for this said no faster than five liters per minute, which is, you know, I think about a gallon and a quarter. So the containers were about, one, the containers of coolant came in one gallon and it took us about two minutes to pour each one, so we just did it nice and slow.
Okay, so we got the coolant swapped here. We've got the new stuff in. What we did is we ended up uh, topping it up and then we let the engine run. We left the cap off and we let it run for a couple minutes and kept adding fluid till it was topped fully off. And then we added kind of a guesstimate somewhere between cold and hot because it is kind of somewhere between there. So after we run it for you know a little bit, we'll come back and we'll check this level and top it back up. So hopefully we're good to go on the coolant. I did notice um, through observation when I was going through all this, I did see some chunks of mud still stuck to the bottom of the radiator, which is definitely blocking our flow. Um, to get to that, I'm gonna have to loosen the radiator pivot it up and probably take off the fan shroud and motor so I can really get to those because I couldn't break them loose with the hose apparently. So we'll do that another time, but for now, we're good. Yeah.